very good afternoon and a warm welcome to Childing's insightful program dedicated to fostering awareness and understanding on crucial issues affecting our community. I am your host, Tiana Jordan, and I am the Advocacy and Communications Officer at Childing Inc. And it's a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. In January 2024, Childing, in collaboration with the International Organization for Migration, IOM, various UN agencies and civil society organizations, as well as government partners, organized a workshop aimed at empowering migrants and their families. The workshop focused on enlightening them about the diverse services provided by these agencies, along with guidance on how to access these essential resources. Our primary goal was to ensure the safety and well-being of migrants during their stay in Guyana, emphasizing adherence to proper processes and protocols. Today on our discussion program, we will be delving into the outcomes of this collaborative effort, shedding light on the services made available to migrants and also the significance of their accessibility. Joining me are two representatives from Childing's partner, partnering community-based organization, Potentia Achievers. We have with us this afternoon, Ms. Parvati Ranglal and Ms. Savita La Cruz. Good afternoon, ladies, and welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you both doing this afternoon? Great. Very good. So this afternoon, um, before we get into you telling us about Potentia Achievers and you know the services that you have to offer especially to the Venezuelan migrant community. Mm -hmm. I want to hear a bit about you. So can you tell me a bit about yourselves and maybe what you do at Potential Achievers, starting with Ms. LaCruz? So good, what, good afternoon once again. Um, I'm the community worker, the humanitarian community worker in Bell West community, mainly working with migrants and local as well. Um, I am 42 years of age. Apart from being a community worker, I'm also a hairdresser. Um, anything else? That's very interesting. I didn't know that about you. Yes. And Ms. Parvati, can you tell us a bit about yourselves, you know, for those persons who aren't familiar with you? Oh, good afternoon all. Um, I am Chief Executive Officer for Potential Achievers, a community-based organization that is located on the West Bank of Demerara. Um, I am extremely um, active as it comes to women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. I love to do that. However, with Potential Achievers, we are servicing the entire family. Men, women, boys, and girls. And so we are hoping that um, we can do as much as possible, because that is my main, main passion. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. And also this afternoon's discussion, you must know it falls under our Communities Responding in Emergencies project, mm -hmm. which is funded by the delegation of the European Union here in Guyana. And of course, you know, this is why we'll be focusing our discussion on the services and maybe your experience with the migrant community. I want to hear your insights about that. But I want Ms. Parvati to, you know, tell us a bit more about Potential Achievers so our viewers can get a better understanding. Maybe you can, you know, take us back down memory lane a bit to when was the organization started, you know, what's the idea behind the name and so on. Okay, so um, Potential Achievers came into full being in 2018. Uh, I think September of 2018, when we were registered as a community-based organization. However, we had a track record um, with a group called Potential Women's Group, and that started in 1991. So we were able to easily uh, put things in place to get potential achievers up and running. Um, we became a partner with uh, Chilink in 2018. And so we, were, we wanted to resuscitate um, some of potential women and the youths in the community 
to do other things so that they can help themselves, they can empower themselves, mm -hmm. their families, and the wider community. Uh, the name Potential Achievers is only um, limited to potential, but we service the entire West Bank community. Is that we are called here, there, and we go. We, we, we are extending the work all the time. And so um, Potential Achievers is uh, uh, up and running um, very actively um, since 2018. That's so great to hear. And um, you mentioned your partnership with Chai Link. Can you, you know, um, tell us a bit about some of the projects that you've worked on, including the Communities Responding in Emergencies CRIE project? Okay. In 2018, we started um, with the Education and Care project, where we were basically in the schools and the community groups. However, before the Education and Care project was finished, we were able to partner on the 1000 Boys project, mm -hmm. which was very, very interesting. Um, it came at a time when our boys really needed that kind of support. It also empowered men who are fathers and the to-be fathers. We shared the kind of information that they needed to hear about and to learn more. And so um, before the 1000 and Boys project ended, we were able to join in, in partnership on the CRIE project, and that is still going. That's mm -hmm. great to know. And you know, now Miss LaCruz, I know you've been, you, you're, you're the one mostly in the communities directly dealing with, you know, the beneficiaries on these projects. Can you tell me about some of these services that Potential Achievers offers, especially to the migrant community? Okay, so we have, um, to begin with, we had the English-Spanish class and Spanish-to-English classes with both adults and children, boys and girls and women, because no men really volunteer to be in that class. Um, then we had a floral arrangement class. We also, currently we are doing a crochet classes where 18 persons are involved from senior citizens all the way to um, students. Senior citizens, um, single mothers, and students. 18 women. Uh, we also have um, the medical services where almost all the migrants family who lives in the Bell West Spanish Town area, they're benefiting from the medical services at the Bell West Health Center. Um, which includes medication, injections for um, the medication would include um, for cholesterol, diabetes, hypertension, you know, the chronic diseases. Also, there is prenatal and postnatal care at the health center. They also benefited from a medical outreach from the church, where I'm from, the Church of Christ. And um, they were given spectacles, they were given reading glasses, their eye testing was done free of cost. And they were also given sunshades, they were given warm, ta um, warm tablet, the warming, um, medications for rash, etc. Um, yes. And I think you also provide um, counseling yes, services. Yes, we did. Con we also doing counseling with them, and from the counseling, you know, families are living better lives. That's yes. great to know, and you know, it's a lot you've been doing. Yes, and from the, the counseling and encouragements, and you know, the face to face one on one that we have in the comfort of their own homes, families are able to were able to start their own businesses and stuff like that. Yes, and that's a success story yes. right there in terms of family being able to start their own business. Mm -hmm. um, the Spanish to um, the Spanish to English classes, you know, that you mentioned. Um, can you tell me some of the success stories? You know, um, yes. how is learning English helping the migrants in their daily yes. lives? Yes, um, some of the kids who were able to spell their names in English, they were able to learn the alphabet and identify the letters and spell their names in English. From that they were able to read. Now we have them placed in schools and some of them are preparing to write the National Grade 6 assessment this year. 
That's great. And um, did anyone wrote the exam before yes. that did well? That yes. You would have thought. Yes. Can you maybe share a bit about? T tell me a bit about the person and you know, yes. how well did they well, do Well, her and so name. On. Yes, her name is. Um, you don't, it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to mention the okay. name. But just tell <laughs> yeah. us. Well, yeah. this is a child who never um, could have understand English before. She has Guyanese background, yes, but the English she used to, um, you know, kind of, it was a bit hard for her. It was challenging for her when she came to Guyana in terms of the reading and so on. So I worked with her for about six months. And little by little, she learned. Little by little. She learned to spell. She learned to read. I shared textbooks with her and so on. And when she did, when she wrote the National Grade 6 examination, she got 475 marks, which enabled her to attend potential secondary school. Nice. That's great. Yes. Miss Farbdi, can you maybe think of some success stories to add to what Ms. LaCruz would have mentioned? Yes. Um, for the migrant women who were sitting at home with less responsibilities, we were able to encourage them to go out there and find a job so that they can help the family economically because they didn't have much, much responsibilities at home. Ms. LaCruz mentioned the, the floral arrangement class. That class was targeting the people who could not leave home. The ones who had their young children or the older family members to take care of, they could have learned that skill and be able to produce right at home and gain economically. That's a success story by itself. Mm -hmm. There are some of them who were able to start their own businesses, little at the street corner mm -hmm. or some other location. They, they um, started a little business selling hot dog and drink and juice, whatever it was. Yes. But, oh, and some of them started to make concrete blocks mm -hmm and they employed their own uh, Venezuelan younger ones who were age like 16 and 15 and did not want to go back to school when they came. So employment was created and the employment story is a success story by itself because we would have seen those migrants moving from plastic, mm -hmm. plastic bags and, and cartoon boxes house to wood and zinc and... Con even concrete. Yes, concrete. Um, we would have witnessed that transition, mm -hmm. um, which is, is very, very good to see in terms of rebuilding um, the struggle. But from one end to another end is a great improvement and good encouragement. They were also able to get potable water in their environment. Uh, yes. We. We um, would have lobbied different places to ensure that the pipeline set in mm -hmm. Spanish town yes. so that they could get proper water from the, the well, the, the pipe. And so that's another success story. Our sensitization program is another success story because they, they came from Venezuela with their culture. And we had to do our sensitization in order to empower them, get them to understand. Simply, simply, some of them did not want to send their children to school mm -hmm. because they did not trust our school system. So we had to work with the mothers, uh, the parents of these children and the HM and staff of the schools where these children were going. They thought that the language barrier would have invited a lot of disadvantage to their children. And we were able to um, convince them that we are working with the HM and staff so that these children will be taken care of when they went to school and they will be well treated and so on. Mm -hmm. After so doing, we were able to see quite a lot of children who were at home get registered in schools. Maybe just not Belvis Primary, but the other nearby schools. And that's another success story. Yes, and there's mm -hmm. really great work you yes. guys are doing. Mm -hmm. um, you would have mentioned, you know, you were working with all the stakeholders within the communities, like the teachers and the, the HMs and so on yes. within the schools. Um, 
what other stakeholders are you working with maybe um you want to tell us a bit about your relationship with maybe the Guyana police force and other stakeholders within communities that you're working with you know to so that you can be able to better help these migrants all right so with the Guyana police force we were able to build a good working relationship with them because when migrants get into problems they do not want to go to the police station there is this language barrier and mm -hmm. from the police side because uh, maybe because of the language barrier the police just keep pushing them away so we i personally would accompany them to the police station and have the officers understand that this lady is going through domestic violence situation and she needs to lay her complaint i even go to court with some of them who needs that kind of support because they to build in order to build their confidence that they can get justice um we do what it takes we sit with them we patiently listen to them we get their stories correct before we go to the police mm -hmm. right um that's that's about the police and the domestic violence situation which is a lot in the migrant communities they are really experiencing a lot of um domestic violence um, with the other stakeholders, the locals, um, we are we are currently doing sensitization with the government part-time workers. Yes. Same in that community, we don't have them alone. We also have the migrants coming over to join those sessions. Um, government part-time workers were people who were at home, not fully engaged in. Uh, uh, um, improvement activities personal development activities so our program would have reached those people also yes. to help them to empower themselves help them to understand better um, their role as a government part-time worker and help them to understand how to conduct themselves while they are on the job some of them would have stepped out to work um, in a working environment for the first time in their lives mm -hmm. And they're 35 and 40 and the, the older, the more mature age. Mm -hmm. And so we had to like step in and say, you know, um, if you come to work, then you got to take orders. You got to follow instructions. You, if something is bothering you, you need to address it in a, in a, more be, in a better way and so on. So locals benefited. We are also working closely with the uh, two flood potential NDC, where we get where we get good support, we get lots of support from them, in terms of um, assisting in the community and doing things for the community. Um, what else? We we we're doing quite a lot that, you know, mm -hmm. yes, it is. We are doing quite a lot. I'm sure that we made an impact. Yes, and based on what you're sharing, you yes, know, we know that. Mm -hmm. you know the extent of the work you're doing mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. for a community-based organization and kudos to that um while we're conversating you know um, i'm hearing about some of the challenges you know some of these challenges that the migrants are facing it's coming up in our conversation for example you mentioned domestic violence you mentioned access to portable water yes. and you know also the language barrier you know um can you share maybe some more challenges that you've observed while working in the community aside from these that the migrants would face maybe if if it's access to, to getting their legal documents yes. electricity so can you go into some more yes details? most of the migrants that i've been helping and working with they don't have um, access to electricity they are using solar lamps candles some of them even are using candles um what else What about you, Ms. Parvati? Is there anything? Um, I know from the workshop that Childing would have hosted last week, um, what came up mostly was the legal um, documentation aspect of it yes, when, yes, yes, as yes. it regards to them getting their ED cards and so on. So maybe you can shed some more light on this. Yes, here, here it is. When they came earlier at the beginning of our project with them, we had to assist with them getting their documents translated. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
But as, the, as this first set got their documents translated, when the new ones came in, they didn't approach us. They approached them yes. because they would have had some link, oh. some relative, some friend, and the camaraderie, the camaraderie among the Venezuelans is a good one. Is a good one. They, 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 they help out each other as they're rebuilding. Um, so for the latter part, we were not really involved in having their documents translated. They knew when they came in, they had to be registered at the border, and the others who were here, they helped them, helped them to get their documents translated. One major, major challenge that I would have witnessed and made recommendations for, and it's working well, is um, when I visited the schools where these migrant children were, um, as an old teacher, I sat and observed. And these migrant children were only sitting in classes. Whatever was delivered to them was passing over their heads. Wow. So the recommendation that I made was um, if teachers could put these migrant children sitting next to each other and um, put them closer up front in the class so that teach they could get teachers' attention, they could hear a little bit better, they could consult with each other, and they could um, try to understand and follow. By, so, by the school taking that recommendation, we, potential achievers, through funding from Chilink, we were able to buy English-Spanish dictionary to give to those children so that they can use it in class. Mm -hmm. They can always have it open between two of them and they can always consult with each other. And that worked well also. Um, from the records that we are seeing in schools, the Spanish children who understanding the English are performing well. Yes. The performance is good in class. So I'm thinking that we, we were able to intervene there and some progress was made there. That's yes. really great to know. Mm -hmm. And um, would you be able to maybe share with us or give us an idea since the CRIE project has started, like how many migrants you would have been able to help to or provide services to? We, we can safely say in family, the families that we were able to provide services in and it's approximately 65 65 because not all the families needed the same kind of service so different family needed different service and so we were able to reach different families for different reasons and my staff here she would have been able to do house visits home visits to see what are the needs and to do the assessment and where we can help we help Mm -hmm. So basically about six to five families. And the work is still in progress. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, like, could you give us an idea how many children? Uh, eight. Approximately, approximately, approximately 80. Eight children. Right. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really great mm -hmm. to know. Yes. So how, how does the assessment go about when you um, go into the communities and you try to determine? Because I'm sure, you know, a lot of persons would need help. So yes, what do you, you look for? You look for um, the way they, they're dressing. You look, you know, for the looks. Some of them, you would know if they're malnourished children or they're not malnourished. You would, from the way, the environment, you look at their environment and you assess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even they themselves would tell you, well, you know, we didn't cook anything for the day. And mm -hmm. in that, you would know, well, okay, this is a needy case. Mm -hmm and you make your assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's really great to know. And in the case, in the instance where you can't help this family or this individual or this child, you would then, you know, partner with yes. all stakeholders yes. to assist them. Can you tell me about those partnerships? Do you partner with HIAS? No. You don't partner with HIAS? No. What? It is in the planning. It's in the planning. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because we have learned um, that only last week that we could have par partnered with HIAS. Oh, and that's really great to see. Yes. I, I guess the workshop, you know, is bringing out that collaboration yes. aspect. Um, what about governmental agencies and so on? 
Okay. Once, once we, we um, partnered with uh, Ministry of Education, Welfare Department, to provide bags, school boots, uh, uniform, uniform for I think 13 children. And those 13 children were not going to school. We had them registered. And then we, we partnered with um, Ministry of Education, uh, Region 3, to provide the stuff for the children to go to school. In terms of potential achievers, we would have provided storybooks, mm -hmm. pencils, exercise stationary. books, stationery, school bags, different, different things to children who are in need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we visit and then the parents say, oh, he's not going to school because he doesn't have a school bag. That is not too much for potential achievers. Right. I, uh, we usually have our own clothes bank, just November. My staff here distributed to 18 families. Yes. Right, 18 families, clothes, footwear, little fineries. Mm -hmm. Also five families benefited from food hampers and stuff. That, that was closer to the holidays. Mm -hmm. We also had a children, we had two children feeding program. Right. And we had VBS for them as well. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Um, In November, um, on November 19th, the Venezuelan uh, parents made recommendation to us that we should have, a they made re requests yes. that we must have something for International Children's children Day. Yes. And so the children were treated with snack items and little tokens little for token. their, you know, their uh -huh. achievements. For uh -huh. instance, those of the, you know, who, who didn't know to say their alphabet well we would call them out in front mm -hmm. and say well say your alphabet for us mm -hmm. and when that is completed then we would say okay here is a little reward for you yes. right so at that at that session uh we had 13 boys and 15 girls all migrant children and um the parents were were delighted they were delighted because they made that request to us and we made it possible it was grand in the community mm -hmm. Um, I remember one time earlier we shared storybooks, yes, brand new storybooks, story um, and the parents, they all came out, you know, they just came out to give us that kind of support. support yes. They were happy that, well, now we are putting English uh, storybooks in their children's hand that will go into the home that some family members can use, and um, it was like, you know, they, they are very thankful too, I must say. The migrant families, when they receive these services, they are very thankful. You see that appreciation. Yes. Um, they are very receptive yes. to us. They are mm -hmm. very receptive. You can go door knocking and they are always open to welcome us. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's, it's really great to hear you talk about them like this because, you know, um, another challenge that other discussions would have brought up or even in the workshop that we would have heard is that, you know, they would face a lot of victimization. So it's really great to hear you talk about them like this so the person can see that they are also human, you know, yes. they're just like us. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, had our, we had our fair share of challenges when we started to work with the migrant community. Um, we had to help our locals to understand that this stigma that they are putting on the migrant women, our men, our local men, are as much responsible. Yes. They are as much responsible because they, they, they want variety. Mm -hmm. They go there. And close. then our women, our local women, are they are upset. So we had to help to pacify that situation and say, you know, um, they, they came here because they need our help and our support. And so host communities got to be able to be, develop a better attitude, a more positive attitude towards them. Um, gradually, 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 we were able to reduce that stigma. Yes. But lots of families break up, I must say, mm -hmm. that we know about. But that's their personal choice. You know, yeah. so that's their personal choice. All in all, we have we have success stories in all the aspects of the work that we did. We were never like um, being treated badly yeah. by the migrants. Never, never. 
when we had this issue with the, just recently, when we had this issue with the Guyana-Venezuela border issue, I was targeted a whole lot in terms of, um, why are you all still working? But these people, they were not guilty of anything. Mm -hmm. They were there, they were living their nice, quiet yes, life. Their normal they were, lives. We could not pull off, we could not stop the work that we were doing. So we continued. And our, our local people gradually came to accept that, you know, we are doing something to help these people. And so, you know, let's go on. Because community leaders reached out to me and they, they were asking, so what are you all doing about it? And I said, we can't do anything about it apart from continue the work that we are doing with them. Mm -hmm. That matter is a national matter and that's going to be sorted by itself. Yeah, and, you know, listening to you share your insights and your experiences, the services that you provide mm -hmm. to the uh, migrant community, you know, it's it's so much that you're doing as an organization. Yes. And um, being in the community, working with the migrants, and so one of the questions, the main question I have to face almost every time I enter Delaware is that, how come y'all offering so much to the Venezuelans what happened to us locals? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, Everything is for them. Everything is for them. And we Guyanese are here and getting nothing. So the plan for our locals also is to include them as well in our training courses in future, starting February, the first week in February. Yes, that's really great to know. Um, and, you know, we would have mentioned earlier that you also provide psychosocial counseling. To um, Can you say to specifically um, who would receive this counseling and maybe... How, what impact the counseling would have had on their lives, maybe what change did it bring about to some maybe you would want to mention a specific person that it would have helped in, yeah. Um, the counseling would have helped uh, quite a few, quite a few who were experiencing domestic violence, um, quite a few who wanted to return to Venezuela to escape the violence here. <laughs> <laughs> counseling helped a whole lot. Um, in terms of bringing them to a, a comfortable place, sit and talk to them, listen to their story, offering options, help them to make the adjustment that they need to make so that they can continue living as a member of the family. Um, most of it was domestic violence counseling, most of it, right. And, and people did not want to go to the law People did not want to go to the police. All they wanted was for the violence to stop. And so I was able to walk them through a couple of options. You know, you got to see which one will work better for you in your situation. I can't tell you that this one is going to work. These are some options. You can try them. And when we did the, uh, when we did the skills training, those women were extremely happy that now they could stay at home and they could get to do something to mm. earn financially. And many of those who did the skills training were not allowed to go out and look for work. Wow. So counseling. Yes, I'm yes. Speaking of the, the skill training again, mm. just last week we started a course with them and one teenage girl, she was, she's able to make items and selling it. This morning, she was selling baby headbands for $500. You see? Nice. Success story there. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. you know, it would help her family and um, to say, well, she's bringing in an income now. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't want to go back to Venezuela for now because mm -hmm. some more income is coming in, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. The other thing with the skills training, when one member of the family um, gained a skill, they, they, could teach the, they could teach mm -hmm. the rest in the home that are willing to learn and it's more happening. production. Mothers are learning as well as their daughters too. The daughters may not be coming to classes because of schooling and so, but after school hours, she would, you know, pick up the needle and the thread and start yes. um, crocheting. Yes. 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 So it's, it's wonderful, the skills training work. Passing down from one generation to the next. Yes. yes. And then they, they're even sharing it with their friends and neighbors as well. So in future, I have upcoming classes, you know, from one graduating set to another. Yes. 
And it's really awesome to see, you know, what you've been able to do under the CRIE project, you know, so much. Um, and you mentioned that you have tr more training. Yes. What other initiatives mm -hmm. do you have planned or, you know, when it comes to ensuring that the migrants, you know, are, you, well, you provide better services for the migrants. What other initiatives do you have planned? Well, um, after the crocheting, I want to introduce the smacking the smack and tread where they would do smacking and make like kitchen towels and you know other items that they would want for themselves um, also I would like to do craft with them yeah. these are some I also planned on training them to do haircuts since I'm the hairdresser <laughs> so I also planning on training them to do haircuts yes. mm-hmm do you have anything to add to this? I, I was thinking in terms of um, helping them to make some of our kind of snacks. Um, that, that, that request came already. But we did have like the little, the, the standard place, you know? Yes. If you're manufacturing, if you're producing snack for yeah. sale, it got to be done hygienically. Mm -hmm. And we were not getting that. So that was pushed on the back burner. For um for them, they selling at the street corner, they selling at places, they're selling their kind of snack, hot dog, juice, all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. They asked, the request came for us to teach them to make our kind of snacks. Pulauri, egg ball, the plantain chips, the the So if we get a chance and we get that healthy environment, we will do it. Just mm -hmm. this morning, one of them was asking me to ask the headmistress of Endeavour Common School to, if she could go in front of the school and put out her hot dog stand there to sell to the, stu to the students. So that's one of my tasks tomorrow yes. or mm -hmm. sometime in the week. Yeah, and it's great mm -hmm. to see that they're also coming to you, you know, they, they, don't, they, they come feel to comfortable us all the time. Yes, to ask for help or to make recommendations mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on. Yes. And they know that I'm the PTA president for the school, so they're coming out. <laughs> you have a lot on your plate. Yes, <laughs> yes. and um, you know, I would have mentioned the workshop that um, Chiling would have hosted in collaboration with IOM recently, um, the stakeholders workshop for the migra Venezuelan migrants. Um, can you share, you know, anything that you would have learned from that workshop? Um, maybe if you want to also make recommendations and so on. Yes, I'm happy to know that we can turn to so many other stakeholders to collaborate with them. What I would also like to see is a GPL come on board because we have heard about potable water but we haven't heard anything about electricity for them and that's a big one for the migrants because they have babies, newborn mm -hmm. babies to CXC children mm -hmm. that needs electricity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so. I remember when I visited the community yes. with you, I was able to see that firsthand, yeah. you know, the challenge that you're facing. And what about you, Ms. Farbuti? Um, GPL is, is one of the major, major things. And um, if, if these partners, like, for example, Blossoming and Hayes and so, um, requested that we can partner with them and so, we need to collaborate in such a way that we don't repeat the same things. Mm -hmm. You know, if we can collaborate in such a way that one set provides skills training totally, one set provides sensitization totally, another set provides another oh, aspect. Think. You know, yes. I think we are going to move in the right direction. So um, it's something that we can think about and... Um, see what is possible yes. I'm thinking yes yes mm -hmm. and what would you like to add or share maybe a message that you want to leave with our viewers this afternoon you want to go, you go. <laughs> <laughs> well to our viewers this afternoon I really really want to say that potential achievers is here to stay and we will continue to partner with Chiling um, they, they gave us excellent support, I must say, and thank you to Chilink for the kind of support they give to us. 
I want to say that all the services that are provided by potential achievers for the, all the communities on the west side are free of cost and uh, we, we want you to come forward and access more of our services. Mm -hmm. um, I want to also say that uh, if you're experiencing domestic violence situation, the earlier you speak out about it, help is available for the perpetrator of domestic violence, for the survivor of domestic violence, and for the children who are witnesses of domestic violence. I want to say that we stand prepared to help you in whatever way we can. And I want to say that our services are 24 hours per day. While our government offices close at 4.30, we are available. You call on us anytime and we do the best we can to help you. So access our services. Um, we look forward to meeting with you at some point to help you with your issues, your family concerns, your teenage children, mm -hmm. all the other stuff that we can help you with. Thank you. So a special good afternoon to all the viewers out there. Again, I would like to I would like to thank you for listening. And if there is anything that you would like to contribute to the migrants, feel free to contact any one of us at Potential Achievers. <laughs> How can they contact you guys? Um, my telephone number is six eight one five three nine six. Good, and and my telephone number is six six nine one three two zero. Do you have and social media platforms that persons can WhatsApp. reach out to? Yes. What's up? What's the WhatsApp number? Six eight one five three nine six. That's really great. So I want to thank you know both of you for taking the okay. Also, before. they can um, access her home. It's fifth, six to three potential. Six to three, three potential. potential. Yes. And that's taking your passion to another level because yes, exactly. you know, the service that you provide, the people yes. who are so passionate about them that they can even come to your home. Yes. Mm -hmm. They do come, you know. Locals and migrants do come to my home. The, I smiled when, when my colleague here said they could access my home. I'm not at home. <laughs> I'm at home in the afternoons. Yes. I'm so at home for thirty five during yes. her rest time mm -hmm. they can even come to Yes. Them. So so if She's you're coming to them. we are open to them. If you're coming to my home, please come after four thirty. <laughs> then is when you will find me home. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh -huh. I wanna encourage you to continue, you know providing your service to the people to the migrants community especially thank you for your work on the communities responding in emergencies project you know and of course our partnership your partnership with childlink is very much appreciated and i want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule i know you had a packed day today and in order to be here you may have had to push some things around so i want to really thank you for doing that you know it's really appreciated and I do look forward to having another conversation with both of you anytime, you know, in the future. So thank you very much. I also want to thank our viewers for tuning in and joining our discussions. You would have heard from Potential Achievers. You would have heard from Ms. Parbati Ranglao and Ms. Savita Cruz about the services that they are providing to the Venezuelan migrant community under the CRIE project, which is funded by the delegation of the European Union in Guyana and of course it's led by Chilink in partnership with other community-based organizations for example potential achievers so thank you for tuning in and see you next time